What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering and I just got back from my local video game store with my Xbox Series X. I thought maybe I would unbox it, share with you why I went with the Series X over the Series S and what are my thoughts of the Xbox versus the PlayStation 5. I have never been a console um fanboy i had a playstation 1 playstation 2 xbox 360 then a playstation 4 and uh, right now i have an xbox series x i can't afford to have both platforms especially when the library is so even but the xbox series x was the one that i went with uh, and there are a couple reasons why first of all i think that there's a lot more value in game pass for example the game pass uh, includes Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, right away on launch day. That's a $50 or $60 value. And that's on top of, you know, all the other Game Pass options that you get. So that's why I went with the Xbox right now. Uh, when you break down which Xbox console you want, there's a Series X and the Series S. Now, I don't know, um, you know, obviously budget is a thing uh, that I want to be respectful of. However... The Series X, for the, a little more cash, just seems to have a lot more processing power to it. Um, if you look at the Series S, it has 512 gigabytes versus the Series X, which has one terabyte. By the way, with modern video games, both hard drives seem small. So if you're going to buy the Series X, also plan on buying the super expensive one terabyte Seagate expansion card too, which puts you into a PC type price market. And that's the biggest uh, drawback I think with the Xbox Series X is to get what you want, to have enough room. You're talking about spending six or $700. Um, you could buy a GTX 1080 even um, type gaming computer for that amount of, uh, of cash. But nonetheless, people like consoles for their various reasons. If you look at frame rate, both offer up to 120 frames per second. Now, the processor in the Xbox Series X has 12 teraflops of power versus just four teraflops of, of power in the Xbox Series S. That said, again, if you like the latest gen console, but you don't even have like a true 4K TV and you're going to play on like your a regular TV or a monitor, it's not going to matter that much. You look at the Xbox Series X in terms of resolution, this offers, in their words, true 4K versus the Series S, which still offers a very crisp 1440p. Obviously, in the Xbox Series X, you have the optical drive, which if you have old games that you want to install or, you know, of that matter, it's important. But in 2020, having an optical drive isn't very relevant since most of the games you'll buy, you'll download anyway. When I was picking up the game or the console, they asked if I wanted any games with it. I said, why would I buy a game? I can just download it, right? Uh, now, the video, obviously, both um, similar. They're both up to, allegedly, 8K and high dynamic range with variable refresh rate and auto low latency mode. Of course, Adobe Visual. Both have the same audio with DTS 5.1. Both have the same ports with three USBs, one HDMI 2.1, and obviously you have the H. Uh, 802.11 dual band wireless although i always suggest hard wiring your consoles and if so it has up to one gigabit ethernet um you know and the games again basically the same both you can live stream and record clips in 4k at 60 frames a second if you have a game that actually delivers 60 frames a second you have digital games that can travel with you um obviously the xbox series s X is significantly larger at 15.1 centimeters deep versus 6.5 centimeters deep. So if space is an issue, perhaps that's a consideration. Everything else is about the same, obviously, other than the price. So here is the Xbox Series X. And again, why did I go with it? Well, I wanted the extra processing power, uh, hoping that down the road, more games would be able to take advantage of it. I know right now, you're probably not seeing that. Here's the back. You've got Halo on the back. Now, you don't, you know, remember the days <coughs> when you bought a console and you got games with it? 
Well, those days are long gone. Uh, but again, if you have Game Pass, that's, of course, a different, different thing. So let's open this. Now, I've got a video coming later today. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I cover video games, I cover technology, I cover uh, pop culture news. And I hope that you'll hit that little red subscribe button down below the video because later today I'll be covering some pre-order shenanigans that uh, Amazon put some people through, including myself, which uh, will negatively affect a lot of people. Let's see if I can figure out how to open this. Oh, here we go. More on the bottom, sorry. It's actually been a long time since I've done unboxing videos. If you're a subscriber of this channel already, you might remember I kind of got my start doing unboxing videos back in the day. Okay, so here is... Let's open this up here. Get you a good look at it. So there it is. Not super duper exciting when you open it, obviously, but you have the cube here. We'll pull that out. Ugh. Oh, wait a minute. Did I just... Okay, so... I think, I in my head, I thought it came with a controller. Ha! <laughs> well, I'm going to have to... Does it not come with a controller? It's got to come with one controller. Okay. I panicked there. I thought it didn't come with a controller. We'll, we'll take a look at that stuff in a second. You know, I thought... I wouldn't even be surprised. I wouldn't even be surprised if it didn't come with a controller these days. Well, here it is. It's quite large. It's, it's quite large. Uh, for comparison, I mean, it's about as tall as if you stood up a PlayStation 4. Um, but, you know, there's not a lot to see. It's just a computer, basically. You know, you've got your... On the back here, you've got your storage expansion slot. You've got your Ethernet cable, your power cable. Then you've got your HDMI out. And then you've got your super speed USB. Let's put this right here. It also comes with one. So if you want two controllers, you're going to need to spend another $60 on a, another controller. And they only give you the AA batteries, not the rechargeable uh, pack. So that's also something to consider. That's kind of crummy. You really want to see, you know, for a wireless controller, I'd have to say that it's kind of a bummer that it doesn't come with rechargeable, like a battery pack. Um, even like the Xbox 360, no, that I don't think that came with it. I think you had to buy it separately. But your traditional Xbox controller, nothing fancy there. And then you've got your HDMI cable and your power cable. What's interesting about the power cable is you don't have a giant power brick. Uh, normally you'd have some huge brick uh, in between here. But you don't. Uh, I think... Yep, that's basically it. Um, once I power it on, the idea will be to sign up for Xbox, Xbox Game Pass and then probably stream uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash thequartering. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions in the comment section down below. But these days... Um, you know, most of the information around the consoles is out already. I do want to finish by saying that don't feel bad about not getting a console on launch. Uh, I'm a little disappointed, although my video editor told me that he was in line at his local GameStop this morning and they actually had extras. So I don't know if he actually got one yet. I'm still waiting to hear back. But from what I'm hearing is they're very difficult to find at launch. Don't overpay for a scalper. Don't overpay a scalper because... There's not a ton of stuff that you need to have right away, right now. Most of the console exclusives come down the road. You can play Assassin's Creed on your PC if you want. Um, you don't need the next-gen console for those games. Whether you went with the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X, I would have loved, I would have absolutely loved to also be showing you PlayStation 5 this week. Doesn't look like I'm going to be able to, which is fine. Um... But that's kind of a bummer. Uh, if you want me to do more tech unboxings, please let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, 
please take just a moment to click that like button and then that red subscribe button right below that. I look forward to streaming this and continuing to review the console. I think the better value is in the Xbox Series X, but I don't think you should feel bad about getting the Series S as you'll still have access to next-gen gaming um, and all the same so sort of features that that brings along with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.